Hello, I'm at Budget now. Today is Friday, and guess what? Today is the last day of the month of April. Praise God. Listen, it's been a wonderful month of angelic assistance. Now, I have, I have received testimony, and I have seen testimonies too. Now, when we teach these things, we, we teach them because it is the prompting of the Spirit of God. And, and when you listen to them, don't just listen to them like, okay, oh, good message. Apply them in your prayers. Say, apply these thoughts when you pray. Apply these thoughts when you study and you meditate. Meditate on these things. And, and let the Holy Spirit expound it in your heart. And then you begin to speak such things too. He said, that's how the manifestation will come to pass. Praise God. Let's just pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for your glory that is being revealed today. And thank you for the month of April. We just bless you. For all the miracles, all the provisions, everything. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Man, praise God. Now, tomorrow, remember, I told you this yesterday, we are having a special prayer meeting. Now, we're going to be focusing on our nation, Nigeria. Now, the address of the physical meeting is on the screen. I want you to, if you can make it, send us a message. If you're in the city of Abuja, send us a message. Now, we, 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 we can't take everybody, so we'll have to... Um, that's why you need to send us a message and then we'll confirm if you, you can come for the meeting. It's a special prayer meeting for our nation. I, I wish I, I would say nobody should miss it, <laughs> you see. But for serious-minded people now, I have to really say this. Serious-minded people. Your heart is, is connected to God for our nation. I tell you something, we are going to be taking certain decisions that you will see in the month of May concerning our nation, Nigeria. We are the church. God has given us two things, power and wisdom. With that power, we can do anything. But with the wisdom of God, we are directed on how to apply that power. And then thirdly, he is giving us authority. Now, we, we, you need to know when to use each of these things. See? So, we are focusing on our nation. And we are going to be displaying the power that God has given to us. The authority he has given to us. And the wisdom he has given to us to bring forth a change in our nation. And let me tell you something. When believers gather like this, like the kind of meeting we're going to have on Saturday, then even the devils know that their time is up. So, so send us a message, um, call, or somehow, you know, however you got this message, send, you know, if you can't get our numbers directly, but our number is on the screen actually. So you can call or send us any uh, message on social media, um, direct message now, not, not, just send us a direct message or something and then we'll get we'll get across to you consigning the meeting now the on-site meeting is going to be from 9 a.m to after 6 p.m i said after i'm not saying we're going to close at six because six o'clock is the beginning of a new watch so we must deal with that watch but then after that six o'clock we're going to close but then the the zoom meeting is going to start by 12 midnight to night tonight praise god tonight at 12 midnight we're starting the zoom meeting because we'll be praying um at every watch during the night um, watches so we'll pray at 12 midnight we'll pray at 3 a.m we'll pray at 6 a.m then the on-site meeting which is going to be broadcasted via zoom also will meet by 9 a.m and it will be there now this one from 9 a.m to 6 p.m there will be no break see so we'll just be there, we'll, we'll pray, we'll teach, we'll, we'll discuss whatever the Spirit of God is bringing up as we pray, you see. So it's, it's, it's when the Bible talks about the assembly of the saints, that's exactly what it's going to be like. Praise God. So I'll be looking forward to seeing you either on site or via Zoom. 
Don't miss a plan for this. Plan. Plan for this. Praise God. All right, so I'm excited just to think of Saturday's meeting. I'm excited. <laughs> Because I've been praying about this and asking the Lord, okay, Lord, what, what role do you want us to play? Because God has been speaking to me concerning the month of May. And now he's giving me the assignment. He said, this is what I want you to do. So, all right. So, we, we were talking yesterday. Now, all month we've been talking of angelic assistance. And for some reason, the Lord is, is, is bringing this to a close with this message. I was sharing with you yesterday how the angels are going to gather all the elect by the word of the Lord. He's gathering the elect. Now, the second scripture, I told you this week, we're just dwelling on two scriptures. The second scripture is in Matthew 13 and verse 41, where he says, The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and those that practice lawlessness. Listen, he is sending his angels. And now Jesus was speaking about the end of time. But you see, when he spoke of the end of time, I want you to understand something here. Prophetically, he was also speaking about now. Now, if you are truly called of God, if you are truly a child of God, there is an experience you would have noticed in your own life at different times. Anytime God wants to take you into a new season of your life or ministry or whatever you're doing, you will notice this. There are certain people that he will cause to leave your life. I'm telling you the truth. Sometimes it may be out of offense. And at other times, it may be just, I mean, we, we just can't flow together anymore. Now, you don't take offense when that happens. Yeah, don't take offense. Because, you see, when God is moving you to the new season, there are certain people who cannot fit into that season. And when they try to force themselves, when you try to force them in, by relationship, you know, you just feel, oh, I, I've, been, I've known this person for so long. He's my friend, and then, and we must, we must, you know, you're trying to pull that person. He, that he or she may become an offense to you in that new season. So I always tell people this: the moment you see that, you know, someone isn't flowing with you anymore, and you know that it's not as a result of some wrong that you have done to them. If you've done some wrong, you need to repent and apologize to them. But you, if you know that, oh, I'm, not, I'm, I'm just walking with the Lord, trusting the Lord, and then suddenly, uh, we don't understand you anymore. Okay, why don't you understand me anymore? And this, 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 and then you see that strife, they're trying to bring in strife, just avoid it. Destroy strife immediately. If it's going to cause a separation, do it quickly. And kill that strife. See, you don't force people into seasons that God have not ordained for them. Because I'll tell you what, you see the seasons we talk about, most of it, they are tailor-made. So before you get to the door of that season, the Spirit of God would have shed, I mean, if you needed to lose certain, you know, you, you know weights, you know, whether physical or spiritual weights, he, he will shed them off you. So you fit the door for that season. Now, anyone who doesn't fit the door for that new season means the person has not been walking with you by the spirit of god so as the lord was dealing with you he wasn't dealing with them so when they all when you all get to that door they cannot get in because they can't fit into the door so that's how it works so when jesus said on that day i will send he, he will send forth his angel to take out everything notice what he said mm. And they will gather out of his skin all things that offend. And no, notice, all things that offend. So why do they offend? Because they don't, they don't align with the pattern. They don't align with what he's doing. So they are set for offense. He said, but the angels will take them away. Now this is one of the reasons as God's children we practice breaking of bread. 
See, people don't understand this. You know, you think we break bread for God to do one big miracle in your life. No, the reason we physically break bread, now is a very deep spiritual thing. A very deep spiritual thing. But the reason we do the physical breaking of bread, I'll tell you why, it's because of the angels. Now, an angel will not just see you and know that you're a child of God. There are certain things that now, you see, that's, that's why you see God give his children certain instructions and you don't understand why. Why would God suddenly say, you guys be circumcised, told Abraham, circumcise every male child. And then he told them in the law, circumcise every male child. Why do you think God was doing that? Doesn't he know his children? I'm telling you the truth, it is because of the angels. He is putting a mark on you. Why did he tell them to put a mark on their doorpost in, 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 when they were in the land of Egypt, over in Goshen? He said, put a, door, a, a blood stain on the doorpost of your because of the angel. Because of the angel. So, when God gives these instructions, he is mindful that the angels need to see the physical thing. Because that's how they operate. So, when God says, gather together, for example, reading in the book of Acts, you know, the disciples, they, they used to gather together Sunday evenings to break bread. Now, why do they do that? They understand what they were doing. So when the Bible says, don't forsake the gathering together of the saints, why did he say that? Some people don't understand. You think it's just to, to be counted as a member of the church. No, when the saints gather, now by the way, that scripture was not specifically referring to attending church Sunday service in church. I want to clear that from your mind. See, I'll tell you why he gave us that instruction. The, the gathering together of saints doesn't necessarily mean going to church on Sunday morning. But what he is telling you to do, make sure you find yourself always in the company of believers. So we equate that company to be the church gathering. But this, this is the truth. Beyond your church gathering, make sure you find yourself in the company of real believers that you know. You understand what I'm saying? Find yourself in such company. You know why? Because when that company gathers, something happens. There is a communication. There is a flow of God's spirit. Now I'm not talking about everybody gathering to listen to one man preach. No, I'm talking about five friends coming together. I'm talking about 10, 15, 20 friends coming together and say, man, let's hang out together. And then, then, then they hang out together and then they begin to talk the word. Praise God. They begin to share their experiences. This must be taking place in your life. If you don't have friends that you do that with, then you need to change your circle. Gather together. Share. In the book of Malachi chapter, Jesus says, those that... that that loved the Lord, they spoke often one with another. And the Lord hearkened and heard them. Guess what? It says a book of remembrance was opened concerning them that feared the Lord. Now, who's writing those things? The angels. So the reason it says don't forsake the assembly of the saints because of the angels. So what do the angels do? When we gather, they are looking at everyone. They are listening to what you say. Mm, 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 that's a believer. That's a believer. <laughs> See, someone say, ah, but all these things people are saying, that's an unbeliever. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. From what you say, they locate you. And guess what? From that meeting, you can, you can just go with some new angels. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. Angels will take notice of you. And when angels take notice of you, do you know what that means? It increases the favor on your life. That's why we don't keep quiet. That's why we don't keep quiet. Everywhere we go, we speak the word. We, we can't be quiet. Why? Because you get into a new environment. The angels in that place ought to know who's here. Praise God. Yeah, it's not written on your forehead that, oh, a, a man of God has come here. A child of God. The moment you open your mouth and you begin to speak, there are angels everywhere. Now they begin to turn around and say, who's talking? Oh, I, I recognize this voice. Praise God. I recognize this voice. And then they, oh, wow, man. No, oh, look, look, man. Ah, 
I, I, I'm, I'm following this guy. <laughs> That's what happens. And then the favor on your life increases. Sometimes you go to a place and something good just happens. You don't understand what happened. How? How? Man, I came here and after angels are walking, they are pleased with the words you speak. So Jesus said, see, because this is who we are, he knows those that are causing offense amongst us. He knows. And he says, I'll send my angels and they will take them because they know them already. <laughs> but they know. Kalu My time is up. Hey, I want to see you tonight. Praise <laughs> God. Send us a message. We'll send you the, the Zoom link. And um, we're going to have a great time tonight. And then tomorrow, I'll see you. For the rest of you, I'll see you on Monday. Have a great weekend. And God bless the month of April for you. Even today, let a miracle take place in your life. I'll see you. Bye-bye.